Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, external uh, pre-built binary tool chains in the uh, Yocta project. So uh, my name is uh, Denis Admitrienko, um, and I'm with uh, Texas Instruments, uh, LCPD, and uh, Araga project. <coughs> so let's uh, start with uh, some definitions. Uh, so what is the uh, external pre-built binary tool chain? So basically, it's a, a cross-compilation tool chain, uh, a compiler, assembler, linker, uh, uh, even uh, glibc system library that is uh, uh, acquired or comes from a third party or, or uh, someone else uh, in a binary pre-built form, so executables and libraries and uh, target uh, libraries. and. Uh, is not built by the uh, Yocta project uh, from sources, uh, which is the uh, default uh, method. So uh, if you are uh, familiar with the Yocta project, uh, that uh, you know that uh, the tool chain uh, gets built when you uh, start building the uh, target uh, content, um, <coughs> which is a standard process uh, for uh, several reasons. First of all, it's uh, I've been in, in complete control over the uh, tool chain. So, but uh, we're going to be talking about the how to use uh, our third party uh, pre built tool chain. So, why so many uh, qualifiers external, pre built, and binary? So, that is uh, uh, you can use uh, uh, either of those, uh, but basically, uh, yeah, uh, using just one of those may, may not be uh, very sufficient. So, uh, external. Uh, which is uh, versus uh, uh, the Yocta project, or for that matter, open embedded uh, default method of building uh, one uh, ourselves internally as part of the build process. So it comes from external. Uh, uh, it comes as, a, a, as an external method. Uh, Pre-build is uh, obviously not building from sources, and uh, binary again not building from sources. So it's in the binary form. Uh, yeah, and uh, on the title slide, you, you saw me uh, being part of LCPD. What that is, uh, it's not uh, Liberty City uh, uh, Police Department from uh, Grand Theft Auto, uh, unfortunately. Uh, sometimes it feels like that. So it's, uh, uh, it's exciting and uh, somewhat dangerous. So, but it, it, it stands for Linux Core Project Development uh, within uh, Texas Instruments. So. That's that's it uh, with the uh, definitions. So, uh, what are the uh, third-party uh, binary tool chains out there? Uh, there are a few uh, popular ones uh, that uh, people are familiar with and uh, like to use those. Uh, Code Sorcery, uh, uh, Sorcery G plus uh, G Lite is a, a very uh, popular uh, choice. Uh, uh, these days, it's a Mentor Graphics uh, Sorcery uh, Code Bench Lite, since uh, Mentor Graphics uh, uh, acquired uh, Code Sorcery. So there is a URL there to uh, uh, the new URL, updated URL, uh, to get the tool chain from. So the Lite edition comes with uh, no support uh, from from Mentor Graphics, uh, but you can you can buy their uh, Pro version or. or uh, they have uh, other editions there with uh, commercial support, so if, if you need uh, that. <coughs> uh, there is also Linaro uh, toolchain binaries. So Linaro uh, works on the uh, toolchain for ARM platforms, and uh, uh, they, they release their uh, sources. So you can obviously build uh, the toolchain from sources, but we've been uh, asking them to uh, produce uh, binary releases as well. So they started doing that uh, uh, about a year ago. Uh, so there is, a, uh, there is a link there for their tool chain. There are also less known uh, pre-built binary tool chains uh, out there, the Angstrom tool chain, uh, which is kind of old right now. Uh, the tool chains published on, on that link are from 2011, I think, uh, maybe early 2012. Uh, and we also have our own uh, tool chain called Raga tool chain that we uh, build ourselves for uh, uh, our needs, our purposes. 
it is also uh, a little bit old by now, so it's uh, from uh, uh, late uh, 2011. Uh, we don't have a, a short vanity URL for our toolchain because it's uh, not really meant to be uh, uh, consumed by uh, uh, public. Uh, uh, really, it's for our internal consumption, but it's it's there. It's 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 uh, publicly available. It's just not not recommended. Yes. Have you tried with the ARM toolchain? Uh, ARM toolchain, uh, but is it GCC based? No, no, no it's not. No, uh, no, haven't tried that. And uh, 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 here we, we're talking about how 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 to uh, plug in GCC based uh, rebuild toolchains into the uh, Yocta flow. Uh, I'm not sure if, if that would be possible uh, using uh, ARM toolchain. I mean, it, it's it's not GCC based; it's uh, completely uh, their own uh, compiler and everything. So it might be uh, 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 too much uh, trouble to really to, to go this way. Yes. So are you going to go through maybe the, the advantages and disadvantages of some of these, or uh, like why do you guys have? Uh, yeah, I can I can I can mention a couple uh, reasons for having our own toolchain, but basically uh, it's not part of this talk. Uh, it's, it's basically up to you to uh, decide which toolchain to use. So there are some uh, alternatives there, so it, uh, you can pick and choose. So in our toolchains, for example, are uh, uh, for ARM platforms, so they uh, they do support. Um, uh, Cortex uh, uh, family of uh, ARM processors, so Cortex A8, A8, uh, A9, A15, and, and so on and so forth. So they don't really uh, uh, provide support for older ARM uh, platforms. So uh, for that reason, you might need to actually rebuild their toolchain uh, from sources or uh, roll your own. Uh, but the reason we uh, made our own our own toolchain back in the day. Uh, we used to use Code Sorcery uh, pre-built toolchain, and uh, the light edition, like I said, it doesn't uh, uh, doesn't come with any uh, commercial support, which uh, again uh, is is uh, could be okay for uh, some uh, people, but also it didn't. Uh, it comes with uh, uh, target uh, libraries. Uh, uh, optimized for older ARM uh, platforms uh, while we needed uh, uh, Cortex optimized uh, libraries. So they, they had ARM v4, v, v5, and uh, v6 uh, optimization in it, but not, not v7. So and uh, we were trying to squeeze every uh, uh, bit of our performance, and we needed uh, system libraries uh, to be optimized uh, for Cortex uh, machines. That, that was one of the uh, reasons. Uh, we build our own uh, toolchain. There were some other uh, small issues here and there, but basically uh, that's that's the biggest one. So, what is the uh, the current existence support in the uh, Yocta project for for using uh, external toolchains? Uh, there is a TC mode uh, variable tool, tool, toolchain mode variable that uh, basically. Uh, points to a uh, include file um, that sets some preferred providers for for the toolchain components. So basically, it sets preferred providers uh, for GCC, uh, binutils, compiler libs, uh, uh, including uh, lib libc and uh, gdb. So it's basically instructing Bitbay to uh, use uh, your own uh, toolchain prefer. Uh, your recipe for the external toolchain versus uh, building uh, those from sources. So the uh, most of the magic is being done by uh, uh, the eglibc package include file, and basically that uh, takes care of packaging uh, eglibc pieces uh, and including things like uh, locales and uh, uh, gconf uh, uh, libraries and so on and so forth. So that, that takes uh, care of uh, a lot of uh, packaging uh, work uh, for, for the external toolchain. Uh, but there is still a, a need for 
uh, recipe there to handle uh, the rest of uh, uh, scrapping and uh, uh, installing in sys roots and uh, uh, packaging work for, for, for remaining of the uh, tool chain. So that's why we, uh, 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 you would need to provide either your own external uh, name tool chain or I'll talk about some of the existing uh, external tool chain uh, recipes there in, in the Yakto project. So a little bit of uh, a classic history. Um, uh, I've been working on uh, integrating code sorcery uh, tool chain with classic open embedded um, about five, five years ago. Um, at the time it was uh, the support was uh, severely broken in the uh, classic open embedded. There was some work in the Apoki, which uh, at the time was a fork of uh, classic open embedded. And uh, uh, basically, I had to uh, fix that up and uh, clean up and uh, enable, enable that in uh, classic OE. And uh, eventually, it was, uh, was part of uh, classic uh, uh, open embedded, uh, sub the support for code sorcery. Uh, and since then, uh, the support uh, for code sorcery uh, is, is there in, in the open embedded, including the open embedded core uh, part of the Yakta project. So like I was saying, uh, there were some pieces there uh, from, uh, I, I took from Pocky, uh, had to fix some, uh, something. Uh, I, I was working within uh, the Araga project, which is our own uh, distribution. So I came up with those uh, uh, CSL version variables, which are uh, being dynamically uh, uh, generated and uh, picked up from, from the tool chain. So uh, things like uh, uh, GCC version, uh, uh, GDB version, uh, DC version, uh, and things like that. So individual components of the tool chain. Uh, so it went into uh, op open embedded classic at the time, and uh, now it's part of uh, OE4. Now, to use that, uh, it's very simple. So you set uh, TC mod uh, equals external sorcery. Uh, and the old uh, name for that was external CSL. So CSL stands for code sorcery light. But uh, these days, it's mentor graphics uh, sorcery uh, tool chain. So, uh, and you also set external tool chain variable uh, to point to that uh, uh, external tool chain on your file system. So basically, path to. Uh, uh, CSL. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, uh, how, how would you use uh, code sorcery in the, uh, in the uh, Yocta project? Uh, uh, very simple. It is version agnostic, so it uh, has, uh, it, it provides uh, Python uh, 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 code there that uh, goes and uh, uh, d dynamically figures out the version uh, of individual components uh, of the tool chain. So Basically, you can uh, uh, use the, this way. You can use uh, uh, pretty much any version of code sorcery uh, you get, um, uh, and also it supports uh, multiple uh, platforms: uh, ARM, MIPS, uh, PowerPC, uh, and also it supports uh, multi-leap, like uh, I mentioned before. Uh, it comes with uh, target libraries com uh, optimized for ARM v4, v5, v6, but unfortunately, no v7 which means no uh, uh, optimized cortex uh, uh, target libraries. Which is okay, you can, you can use uh, one of the uh, uh, older ones, ARM, ARM 4, V5, V6, but uh, performance may be slightly uh, uh, lower. Uh, yeah, and uh, down there I mentioned some names, and basically uh, uh, Richard uh, was the one uh, originally uh, working on, on that in Pocky, so I uh, picked some of his work and uh, ported that to Classic uh, Open Embedded. Then uh, Tom Rini, when he uh, w uh, was working for Mental Graphics, he was uh, maintaining those recipes, and now uh, Chris Larson is doing, <coughs> is doing that. So he's the, the uh, main guy behind main guy behind uh, yeah, main guy behind uh, this uh, recipe behind the uh, code source supporting the Yocto project right now. Uh, so Linaro toolchain is uh, is not part of the open uh, open embedded core uh, main layer, but uh, it comes uh, in its own uh, layer that is uh, Yocto compatible. So there is a URL there for Metalinaro layer. Again, uh, Metalinaro layer, uh, it has some other Linaro uh, pieces in there, like uh, 
Linear kernel and Linear toolchain build from sources, but also it provides the uh, packaging recipe for using uh, the external pre-built uh, toolchain. So again, uh, very very easy to use. Uh, uh, besides plugging in the uh, new layer to your uh, layer stack uh, in bblayers.conf file, you just set tc mod equals external Linaro and uh, external toolchain equals uh, to uh, uh, equals uh, path to Linaro toolchain where you have it on your uh, uh, file system on your host file system. So the uh, there was uh, uh, switch from uh, soft floating point to hard floating point, so hard P. Uh, the binaries uh, uh, right now they come uh, in uh, hard P ABI uh, these days. So uh, by default, the LT target uh, system sets uh, is set to uh, ARM Linux GNU ABI HF. But basically, if you get uh, an older uh, Linux um, binary tool chain, which uh, uh, supports uh, soft FP, then uh, you would need to change that. So it's ARM Linux GNU ABI in that case. So HF suffix there uh, signifies the, the hard FP support. Again, it's it's uh, version agnostic. It uh, provides its own set of uh, uh, Python uh, functions to populate ELT version uh, there. So those are ELT version GCC, ELT version uh, uh, GDB, ELT version GLibc, uh, and so on and so forth. So initially, uh, uh, Ken Werner worked on uh, on this uh, recipe on the on the support, and uh, now it's uh, it's Marsen uh, 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 with uh, some help from uh, from Cam Cam Raj uh, uh, is uh, is our uh, toolchain uh, guy in, in open embedded uh, uh, community. So he's uh, he's a good help. <coughs> so and as I mentioned. Uh, we we have our own toolchain, Araga toolchain, uh, and basically I'll be using uh, that as an example of uh, uh, first of all how to use that, but also how to uh, uh, how to create a way of using your own toolchain. Uh, it could be a, a toolchain you build yourself or you acquired from from someone else, but you want to use it within the uh, Yocta project. So how do you then uh, plug it in? So with, uh, with with this example of using Araga toolchain, uh, first of all, Araga uh, uh, toolchain recipes are in uh, Meta Araga uh, layer. Uh, there is a URL there. Again, you set uh, TC mode uh, equals external Araga, and basically that points to uh, uh, external Araga dot ink file somewhere in, uh, in your layer that sets uh, preferred providers, like like I mentioned uh, uh, several slides uh, uh, back. So that's Pretty much all, all, all you need to do uh, uh, to set preferred providers uh, to point to your uh, tool chain. Also, it, it is a version agnostic. Uh, uh, we'll, uh, we also have those uh, variables, uh, uh, versions, and uh, but we also extend it uh, further with license. So I, I'm, I'm, uh, I have a, a Python code that, that uh, basically ex dynamically extracts license information from uh, from the uh, tool chain. Um, obviously, there is some knowledge there that uh, which version of GCC was uh, GPLv2 versus uh, when it became uh, GPLv3 and uh, things like that. So, uh, so basically, based on the uh, version. So, for example, GDB uh, version 6.6 .6 was the last uh, GPLv2 uh, release. So, all the newer versions are GPLv3. So, that that is when you uh, care about uh, uh, GPLv3. Whether you need to. Uh, uh, distribute that or not. So, uh, besides versions, there, there are also license uh, variables <coughs> there. Uh, um, external tool chain, like, like you uh, saw in previous slides, uh, all other external tool chains, uh, you need to uh, point to where your uh, tool chain is to, to use it. Uh, you can do that as well in, with Arago, but what, uh, what we do differently is, is uh, we expect the tool chain to be uh, already in your uh, path. Environment variable, and we just uh, dynamically locate it and populate external tool chain automatically uh, for you. So uh, it doesn't matter where you install it on uh, your file system; uh, you don't need to change recipes or configurations. Uh, uh, as long as you have it in your uh, path, it will be uh, will be found. So, uh, and uh, now for the uh, uh, scrapping uh, 
recipe that basically packages the uh, target uh, content. Uh, there is a recipe score meta external Raga toolchain uh, that we will uh, look, look at. Uh, so like uh, uh, I mentioned before, all you need to do is uh, 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 include that eglibc package.ing file uh, at the top, which will take care of most of the uh, uh, glibc packaging uh, tasks uh, for you. Uh, but you, you, you also need to provide some help to uh, to that and uh, some additional uh, packaging uh, there. So uh, that is the uh, Yakta project recipe. So if you're familiar, we'll, you'll, you'll find it uh, 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 clear to understand. But uh, if not, uh, I'll, I'll uh, uh, briefly explain. So provides basically uh, uh, tells uh, the bit break and the, the uh, build environment that this recipe provides those components. So there's. Uh, uh, those are uh, most virtual components. Uh, GCC for the target, uh, uh, in our case, would be ARM, Linux, GNU ABI, GCC. So what we're uh, saying is that uh, our recipe uh, provides those components, uh, all, all the uh, toolchain components, GCC, uh, binutils, uh, compiler libs, and, and so on and so forth, uh, as well as uh, uh, libc library and uh, all the other uh, uh, libc uh, components there, uh, Linux libc headers as well, and uh, GDP server, so on and so forth. Uh, packages is basically, uh, uh, it, it basically tells that uh, the output of uh, this recipe will, uh, would be those packages, and we, uh, uh, besides uh, glibc, that uh, eglibc package.in file takes care of, we also uh, want to package other target uh, content as well, things like libgcc uh, with its headers, uh, stdc++ with its headers, uh, and uh, kernel uh, headers for the user space as well there. Uh, some glibc uh, uh, utils and, and so on and so forth. So the list is not complete, it's just, uh, I, I just listed the, the, the most important uh, packages there. So, and this is the second half of uh, the recipe. Uh, again, for, uh, it, it, it's uh, it's not complete. The recipe is not complete, but uh, just just showing you the the, the main uh, uh, parts there. So files uh, instruction uh, the the files uh, variable basically list all the files that you need to package into uh, glibc. Uh, just shown here with glibc, but uh, all the other packages that uh, I mentioned on the previous slide, libgcc, stdc++, so on and so forth. Uh, they they Need, need to have that files uh, uh, variable list and all the uh, uh, the actual files that uh, will go into the package. So, but as you can see, uh, uh, there you you have uh, uh, slash lib slash libc star. Basically, all the libc uh, uh, libraries uh, will be picked up: libm, ld, uh, ptreads, resolve. Uh, LibRT, LibTL, so on and so, on, so forth. Uh, so all the target libraries will be uh, picked up and packaged into uh, glibc. Uh, then you set some descriptions, uh, uh, package names, package versions, uh, licenses for those packages. So package versions and licenses are, are uh, directly being picked up from, from those uh, automatic variables that we populate with the uh, Python code. And uh, the install uh, there is uh, basically telling uh, instructing Bitbake uh, uh, how to uh, scrape some uh, scrape uh, those uh, uh, toolchain pieces, uh, install them into sysroots, and uh, eventually package those into a, a binary package, APK, RPM, Debras, and so on and so forth. That that is part of the Yocto project uh, 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 magic behind the scene, uh, uh, part of the uh, framework. But basically what you're saying is that uh, in the destination uh, uh, area, the destination directory, you, you could, uh, uh, make sure that there is a bin, bin directory, lib directory, and then uh, include directory are uh, present. The directories are there, and then you start installing, uh, start copying pieces from the external toolchain, from, from the installation of your uh, toolchain somewhere on your host file system into the sysroots, into the uh, uh, dollar assigned D, which is the uh, uh, dist uh, destination. Eventually, it will be uh, uh, 
uh, installed in the sys roots. So libdor, so you, you copy uh, everything from libdor uh, of the tool chain to uh, sys roots, include door as well. So and uh, dot 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 there is basically you uh, keep copying all the new pieces. So as you uh, noticed, we only take care uh, of uh, glibc, the, uh, the target content here, uh, as well as lib, uh, libgcc. So uh, 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 libc libraries are part of uh, glibc or eglibc, uh, and uh, while uh, uh, libgcc and libstdc++ are part of uh, gcc component, but all of them are uh, uh, usually part of the uh, tool chain. So here we uh, take care of uh, most of the target uh, content, uh, the libraries uh, and header files for the uh, dev kit. So what are the limitations, uh, uh, issues and limitations of uh, uh, that approach? Uh, the first one is uh, there is, uh, uh, there is this uh, libc dependencies uh, global variable uh, defi defined there, which uh, is being used by uh, several other recipes. That basically pulls the, the entire uh, uh, libc uh, stack, um, all the, all the uh, system libraries uh, into the uh, uh, build. So uh, like I said, that, that variable is uh, being set and uh, being, uh, being, being referenced and pulled into uh, several other uh, recipes within uh, Yocta project. Uh, excuse me. <coughs> so unfortunately, uh, uh, all the existing external name toolchain recipes like external CSL or sorcery toolchain, external Linara toolchain, including external Araga toolchain, they, uh, while they do generate eglibc, they, 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 they uh, grab uh, those uh, uh, eglibc pieces, uh, uh, libraries uh, from, from the toolchain and package them. Uh, unfortunately, they do provide uh, glibc, not eglibc, so slight uh, change in the name. So glibc is a more generic name for, uh, uh, for system libraries. Uh, there is a, a virtual libc uh, uh, target defined uh, specifically for that, but it's not being used. So uh, like I, uh, I mentioned, libc dependencies uh, uh, just lists uh, uh, e.g. libc uh, specifically there. So that is the default uh, setting for libc dependencies. Uh, and uh, I'll show you uh, what are the uh, uh, ways to, to solve that uh, issue. The, the other limitation is that uh, by default, those external uh, name toolchain recipes, they, they package libc, uh, the, the target content, the libc libraries, uh, and headers, uh, uh, libgcc, uh, and so on and so forth. But they do not package uh, uh, the actual uh, binaries, the compiler, uh, uh, linker, assembler, debugger, and so on and so forth. Uh, those have been uh, used during the build directly from, from your uh, installation on, on the host file system. So uh, when you want to uh, produce an SDK um, for for uh, your customers to, to use for, for, uh, for their uh, work, for their uh, cross-compilation uh, work, you also need to uh, uh, provide those, uh, those binaries as part of your SDK. So your SDK, uh, in, many, in, in most cases, uh, would need to have uh, those binaries as well, so the, uh, the uh, tool chain binaries. <coughs> so how we... Uh, solve those uh, limitations and issues. Um, yeah, first of all, uh, this is the exam, uh, the, uh, no, sorry. Uh, so libc dependencies, like I mentioned, uh, uh, by default, uh, it uh, depends on all the uh, specific e.g. libc pieces. Now, but uh, uh, all of the external uh, tool chain recipes out there, uh, they, they do provide glibc instead of eglibc. So what happens is uh, once you start using uh, external tool chain and you uh, start building one of those recipes that depend on uh, direct on libc dependencies, uh, uh, you'll notice that it will try to pull eglibc e into the build process and uh, try to build that from sources, even though that your external binary tool chain already provides that. So 
you don't really need to rebuild AGLibc from sources. Uh, so to solve that is we do need either to change all the uh, existing recipes for external tool chains out there to provide not just glibc but eglibc as well so that would satisfy the uh, dependencies or uh, another option is uh, this uh, this uh, uh, another variable called tclibc uh, it's similar to the previous one which is tc mode uh, tool chain mode this one is actually sets uh, tool chain libc and again, it's, uh, it just points to some include file out there uh, that sets some things. So uh, the way uh, I fix that is uh, I actually provided my own external Raga toolchain.ing file, and I set uh, tclibc uh, equals uh, external Raga toolchain, and it will uh, uh, it, it will just pick up that include file and redefine redefine the uh, libc dependency there. So the only difference here is that libc dependency uh, uh, lists uh, glibc instead of eglibc. So since we, uh, since our uh, external toolchain pro provides all, uh, all those uh, glibc uh, pieces, so that will uh, shortcut it and uh, uh, not bring eglibc uh, built from sources into the picture. Now the second problem is uh, packaging. Uh, SDK. Uh, so, or packaging uh, external uh, toolchain components, uh, uh, namely binaries, into into the SDK. Uh, like I said, the problem is that uh, uh, the default external toolchain uh, recipes they uh, package uh, target content, uh, libc, uh, libgcc, libsdc++, and uh, their headers. Uh, and headers go into dash dev uh, packages. And uh, here's how we uh, configure it to also package uh, the binaries. So we need to uh, configure preferred providers for uh, things like GCC cross Canadian um, for our architecture. So GCC cross Canadian ARM, let's say, GCC uh, GDB cross Canadian ARM, and uh, BNUTILS uh, cross Canadian ARM. Uh, we just uh, set those preferred providers uh, to point to uh, another recipe that we provide. Uh, this time we call it uh, external name of your toolchain, SDK toolchain. So, and again, I'll be showing you example of uh, how I do it with external Arago. Uh, toolchain. So in this case, the uh, recipe would be external Arago SDK toolchain. Slightly different from from the original external uh, from the original recipe that only packages uh, uh, target uh, content. So uh, the recipe is slightly long, so it's uh, three uh, three slides to cover the recipe. But uh, basically, it's uh, lots of repetition there. Once you uh, understand the the, the basics, then uh, it's very uh, very easy. So this is the the content of uh, external Arago SDK toolchain, but can be substituted to uh, to use uh, your own uh, toolchain. That's that's their name. So uh, uh, first of all, you inherit a cross uh, Canadian uh, uh, class. Uh, uh, basically, you're saying that uh, the output of your recipe is uh, uh, those are cross Canadian excuse me, cross-Canadian packages. So this recipe provides just uh, three uh, uh, basic uh, components, and uh, the output is, again, uh, the same three uh, uh, packages, those components uh, packaged into, uh, into binary packages. Uh, GCC, GDB, and BNUTILS. And again, translated target arc is, is basically your architecture. And in our case, it's ARM, uh, could be a, a your own architecture in there. So, <clears throat> and then we just uh, uh, list all the files uh, for uh, those three uh, packages that we uh, generate. Uh, GCC cross uh, Canadian, uh, those are GCC pieces, so all the binaries, uh, libraries, and symlinks, like for example, uh, prefix, prefix target Cs, uh, bin uh, CPP and bin CC, bin GCC, those are normally short. Uh, uh, short, uh, shortened names uh, 
sim links into the actual binaries. And actual binaries go into the uh, bin door with target prefix, in our case, ARM, Linux, Linux GNU BI, GCC, ARM, Linux, GNU BI, uh, G++, ARM, Linux, GNU BI, CPP, and so on and so forth. We also uh, package the uh, entire libexec door, door in there. So that's, uh, and again, that is not complete, but uh, uh, packaging all the basics for GCC. Uh, for G GDB, it's very simple, just the binary and the, uh, con the entire content of uh, user share GDB. For binutils, again, uh, we package all the uh, binutils pieces in there, linker, assembler, uh, read elf, object copy, object dump, uh, NM, all, all those uh, supporting binaries, including header files, uh, LD scripts, and uh, LibriBerty uh, library there needed for, for binutils. <coughs> And the uh, final part of the recipe, we set uh, versions. Again, those are uh, being set automatically. Licenses and do install is, uh, is the important piece. It basically, uh, we start copying those uh, pieces from, from the location where the uh, tool chain is installed in our, on our file system into the sys root. So, and uh, there you can see the uh, CP. We CP all the binaries. Uh, uh, in, into the uh, uh, corresponding directory and then see through all the libraries uh, and so on and so forth. So it's, uh, it's not complete, obviously, but that, that's how you uh, generally do it. So a uh, few words on uh, how you roll your own binary tool chain. So I, I keep saying that uh, uh, those recipes uh, and, and uh, just give a generic name uh, external dash name dash uh, tool chain. So which means uh, you can use either of the, uh, one, one of the existing uh, uh, third party tool chains from Mentor Graphics, uh, Sorcery tool chain or Linara tool chain or Angstrom, Arago, or ooh, there are others. But you can also uh, build your own uh, from sources uh, using uh, the Octo project. Uh, so in order to do that, you use one of the existing meta tool chain uh, recipes, or you extend it uh, the way you need it. So, but uh, basically, first of all, make sure that you uh, set, uh, configure everything to use internal tool chain, obviously. So you, you want to build it from sources. So you don't set those uh, TC mode, TC libc, uh, and the external tool chain path. You just rely on uh, how the tool chain is being built uh, normally from sources. Uh, and uh, tool chain and uh, target libraries as well. So the output of that would be uh, uh, SDK or tool chain uh, uh, packaged into a tarball for older versions or uh, it's a shell wrapped uh, installer for newer versions. Uh, uh, there is some work on uh, making it multi-lib, uh, so uh, support for multi-lib uh, tool chains. Um, it was added uh, uh, after uh, Danny release, after the uh, last 1.3 uh, project 1.3 release, so it's not part of Danny. It's in the master branch, will be part of the next uh, 1.4 uh, release of the Yocto project. Uh, what it gives you is uh, uh, allows you to have uh, multiple uh, architecture optimized libraries, uh, target libraries in, in the same SDK. So you would. Uh, uh, you would have uh, an SDK or tool chain uh, with uh, target libraries like uh, libc, lib, uh, uh, libgcc, uh, cdc++, uh, all the others uh, optimized for, for your uh, uh, architecture. So by that I mean uh, the compiler, the cross compiler itself uh, uh, knows how to optimize uh, uh, for a specific architecture, but uh, the library comes pre-compiled for a specific architecture. Uh, so if you want to use that on an older uh, platform, you, you need those libraries to build for an older architecture to be compatible, but you will not get the, the uh, performance optimizations. Uh, but if you, if, you want, uh, if you want to use those libraries on a newer uh, architecture, newer version of the same architecture, then uh, you would uh, you would want those uh, to be uh, optimized. 
So examples, so, uh, I already made examples with ARM. So that would be ARM v4, v5, v6, uh, v7 uh, in instruction sets and uh, optimized for Cortex-8, for example, uh, due to uh, uh, pipe, pipeline uh, length and, uh, and other uh, specifics, uh, the, the code will, will be uh, faster uh, if, it, if it was optimized for Cortex, but it won't run on, on older, uh, uh, older ARM uh, platforms. Uh, same applies for x86 uh, architecture, for example. So where uh, x86 is just a generic uh, uh, architecture uh, with instruction set, but you can uh, optimize your uh, target libraries for either for i386, i486, 586, uh, 686, and uh, 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 they are uh, uh, they are backward compatible. But you cannot run, uh, for example, 686 uh, optimized uh, uh, binaries uh, uh, libraries, so that the code won't won't run on 386, for example. So that's uh, uh, that's why you would uh, uh, need, want multi-lib uh, uh, in your SDK. Uh, so how do you reuse the, the output of, uh, basically, w once you roll your own uh, tool chain, you want to uh, reuse it uh, uh, for further uh, Yocta project builds. So again, uh, very, very easy. You just provide that uh, uh, recipe that, that packages uh, uh, glibc. Uh, target libraries co uh, content, uh, you said TC mode and TC libc uh, correspondingly, and uh, depending on the uh, uh, directory structure of the uh, tool chain, the or SDK, you, you may need to adjust that uh, uh, recipe that we talked about uh, already. Uh, reason for that is uh, uh, used to be that uh, uh, host uh, binaries are uh, sitting there in the uh, root directory of the tool chain while uh, target content goes into the uh, target uh, uh, system, target prefix uh, subdirectory like ARM Linux and ABI, for example. So in new uh, Yocta uh, produced uh, SDKs, uh, basically the entire sysroots, native sysroots versus uh, target sysroot, they, uh, they are sitting side by side. So we need to adjust the directory structure slightly. Uh, or your I, either way, you either adjust uh, how you produce the tool chain uh, with old uh, director structure, new one, or if you use the new one, you, you need to adjust the existing uh, external tool chain recipe uh, for the new structure. So, reuse it for SDK again, uh, uh, similar to what I already ex explained. So you just use that SDK uh, tool chain recipe to uh, to package uh, the the actual binaries. So refer to those slides, configuration, and uh, the actual recipe. Uh, uh, the toolchain binaries will be uh, packaged in your SDK uh, on the, for the host side of the SDK. Uh, target li uh, libraries and headers will be packaged for the target side of the SDK. Uh, if done properly, so your SDK, and no matter, no matter if your SDK is just a toolchain or a toolchain plus additional uh, target content, it can still be uh, used uh, back later on uh, for, for further uh, Yocta builds uh, again. So it can be reused and reused again using the same uh, external tool chain recipes. So just completing the circle. <coughs> so a uh, few words about the tool chain less SDK. Uh, I talked about uh, producing SDKs that uh, contain the uh, uh, tool chain binaries, uh, the, the cross compiler, uh, linker, assembler. Uh, so on and so forth, but there are um, uh, sometimes you, you would need to actually uh, release your SDK, which uh, should not contain the uh, the uh, tool chain. So in that case, the SDK would be just the target content, additional libraries or, or, or header files, and then and the tools ne uh, uh, needed to to do uh, uh, cro cross development. Uh, but it won't provide the uh, the tool chain, so <coughs> that is uh, sometimes useful. The reason for that is, uh, let's say you don't want to uh, distribute the tool chain uh, which you acquired from a third party, and you want your customers, uh, your SDK customers, to uh, acquire their own copy of the same tool chain. 
So in order to use the, the your SDK, uh, customers would need to uh, get the, the tool chain on their own, but basically they combine it and uh, uh, they can use uh, the tool chain. So uh, it's a slightly interesting uh, use case, but uh, uh, some, sometimes uh, it happens uh, that you need to do that. So for that, you would need to uh, uh, clean up uh, mostly uh, GLIPC uh, components uh, uh, from, from, from the uh, SDK output there. Uh, it's easy to, uh, to drop the binaries, so it basically specified that, uh, uh, I showed you how to uh, actually specify that you want uh, GCC, GDB, and BNUT to be uh, part of your as output, uh, your SDK output, uh, and it's easy to drop them. But GLIPC, unfortunately, it's not that easy to drop because it's, it's a, the, the major dependency there. Anything you build for the target will bring uh, uh, GLIPC pieces. Uh, so for that, you just let it uh, install in the SDK, and right at the end of uh, 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 making the SDK, you clean it up. So you just call, uh, in this case, uh, OPKGCL and remove uh, uh, remove the, the list of toolchain target uh, exclude there. Um, so you, you, you want to list all the uh, uh, GDPC libraries in there. Uh, this code is uh, specific to IP, IPK, the uh, OPKG, so a populated SDK uh, there is, is kind of generic name, but there are uh, versions for IPK, uh, RPM, and, and DAP, so you would need to provide uh, all three of those. So this code was uh, so uh, I came up with that code and, and uh, committed it to a classic OE back then, uh, So, but it's not uh, part of OE core as of now. So I uh, may need to clean it up and uh, try submitting it uh, to OE core, Yakta project. Uh, now uh, let's talk uh, about Canadian Cross. Uh, um, so that is the very generic uh, uh, overview and uh, explains, explains what the Canadian Cross is about. Uh, basically allows you to uh, build the cross compiler and uh, uh, it, uh, it, it uses three, three uh, machines there in the example uh, A, B, and C uh, in very uh, uh, generic terms. So A machine is basically your uh, development machine and in many cases, that would be an x86-based, 64-bit, uh, uh, modern uh, uh, lin Linux uh, distribution uh, there, uh, multi-core, so you want a uh, beefier uh, build server there, so that's uh, machine A is your machine. Machine B is the, uh, your customer uh, machine that uh, will uh, uh, use SDK on. So in many cases, you want to target some uh, lower uh, common denominator, so let's say uh, slightly older Linux distribution on, uh, on the 30-bit, 32-bit uh, 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 x86 machine, but it's not limited to that, uh, to, to be x86, the same architecture. It could be a power PC. So you can use x86 as your development machine, so customers will use uh, power PC, for example, for their SDK work, uh, uh, the, and uh, uh, they want to target uh, the embedded system, let's say, ARM-based uh, platform running uh, uh, Yocto uh, project-based uh, uh, distribution such as uh, Pocky, Angstrom, or Arago. And, I mean, the Canadian cross is, uh, the term is slightly confusing, but basically that's the reason why it's called that way. Uh, the main point is that there are three machines involved in the process. So, uh, Yocto project supports uh, Canadian cross and um, uh, there is a cross Canadian uh, class being provided uh, that uh, takes care of uh, uh, all, all the magic behind that. So uh, the main configuration point there is uh, you have SDK machine variable. Uh, you already have a machine variable that uh, you specify what uh, target platform uh, you're building for. So SDK machine is basically you specify uh, what would be the host machine uh, where the SDK would, will be running on. Uh, in many cases, let's say machine you set it to uh, one of the ARM uh, targets, while SDK machine you want to set to i686, which would be 32-bit uh, uh, x86 machine. 
So the output is uh, GCC, GDB, and BNUTILs, uh, cross-Canadian uh, packages for the uh, target architect architecture. In our case, would be ARM. So cross-SDK toolchain is being built uh, as, as the pro uh, uh, during the process. So that is um, the toolchain. So again, our uh, cross-SDK, uh, sorry, uh, cross-Canadian uh, uh, packages, they are meant, so they, they, uh, those will be binaries, uh, uh, target those will be binaries to, to be run on uh, i686 32 bit uh, x86 machine uh, to and be able to produce ARM uh, output, while cross SDK toolchain is uh, the toolchain to, to be able to build those cross Canadian uh, uh, pieces. So that would be a uh, uh, 64 bit x86 uh, uh, binary to produce. Uh, uh, 32 bit x86 binary. Or, like I said, another example uh, uh, would be uh, to run on x86 produce uh, uh, PowerPC output, while Cross Canadian will, will run on uh, PowerPC and produce ARM. So that's a little bit weird situation, but uh, in most common uh, scenarios, uh, 64 bit uh, uh, x86, 32 bit x86, and the output is your uh, embedded uh, platform. So native SDK tools, those are additional tools like uh, lib tool, other tools, uh, so on and so forth that you may uh, want to uh, ship into, uh, package into SDK and ship with your SDK. Uh, again, those are binaries uh, uh, for, for your SDK machine. So in this case, it would be 32-bit x86 binaries. And also uh, self-contained binaries, uh, that is, uh, 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 an interesting topic in the Yapta project. So the the, uh, uh, the binaries uh, which are being produced for the uh, SDK, they are self-contained, and I'll, I'll talk about uh, that. So uh, they are self-contained because they, they come uh, with all the libraries, they, with, with all the system libraries they need. So basically, uh, uh, our SDK comes with its own uh, set of uh, libc uh, libc libraries and uh, everything else including the, the uh, dynamic loader uh, and interpreter, so which is ldlinux.so. Uh, so everything comes as part of the uh, SDK. So, and all the health headers are uh, uh, preset to use those instead of uh, the ones from, from the host system. The um, reason for that is we want uh, total control over uh, what is being uh, linked and loaded uh, uh, on the on the uh, SDK machine on the host, uh, uh, we may be build, uh, building uh, uh, the latest GCC using latest uh, glibc. So that needs to be able to uh, to work on uh, some older machine that uh, customers might have. So and we cannot rely on the uh, libc provided by uh, by that machines uh, uh, that that uh, customers uh, machine. Uh, so elf headers, uh, their so PT uh, interp uh, section is being said to uh, uh, point to our own dynamic uh, loader interpreter, ldlinux.so. Uh, our path and run path are being uh, set there also to uh, to be able to load our uh, own libraries, uh, including libc, but also other libraries as well. So uh, now we use uh, dollar origin. Uh, uh, directive to, to, to do relative uh, dynamic uh, uh, linking. So uh, CHR path is being used uh, uh, to update uh, those self-headers. Um, again, we uh, don't build it uh, ourselves and we rely on the host system to provide one. It's, uh, it's a quite common uh, tool uh, for uh, most of, uh, pretty much all of the Linux distributions out there. The limitation is that it cannot grow uh, uh, elf header uh, fields uh, and sections, so you, you should have the uh, existing uh, long enough to, to be uh, uh, able to update it. So there is a patch elf uh, uh, tool that is a better alternative. It can grow uh, fields and sections, uh, can basically rewrite elf header, but uh, it's not common uh, on the host system, so you would need to build it from sources, and right now it's not uh, implemented as, as it is seen as the extra build dependency as one of the native packages. So now we uh, come, in, uh, come to a, a real relocatability problem uh, with those self-contained binaries. So 
like I said, we in the health header we hard code uh, uh, path to our dynamic lo uh, loader interpreter, which is LD Linux uh, uh, .so that we provide uh, ourselves, uh, and also the uh, the all the other dynamic uh, libraries there. <coughs> so back in Denzil, which is uh, one of two release of the Yakta project, there was no relocatability. So SDK path was uh, hard coded into all the binaries. Uh, so you would uh, you would build your SDK and uh, assume that it would be installed in some uh, generic place on the uh, uh, customer's uh, system, and that would be the only place where you can install it. So, for example, uh, uh, with the Arago uh, SDK as, as an output, it would be a user local Arago uh, something, and you would. Uh, expect uh, everyone to install that SDK, that toolchain, into the same uh, location for it to work. Otherwise, the binaries uh, won't work. It wouldn't be able to find uh, neither of the dynamic lo loader or linker. So uh, we had our uh, own custom solution to that problem. So I, uh, I came up with the uh, uh, shell stop solution there for Arago when we uh, were uh, using Denzel as a base. So basically, uh, we rename all the binaries into uh, uh, a different name. So basically, uh, uh, there is dot .real suffix uh, being used for actual binaries. And we install those shell stops with the actual names, uh, which would uh, then uh, alter uh, LD library path, as well as uh, run the real library through the uh, uh, ldlinux.so that we provide. So it will call uh, ldlinux.so. Uh, the two and uh, the name of the uh, binary and pass all the parameters. So that that way we we solve the relocatability issue. So you can actually uh, move your SDK around on the host system and it will work uh, when uh, regardless where it's installed to.